you might have a dream that you're marrying an ex. That don't mean hit them up on Facebook or hit a jump in their DMs or let them back into your life because they might marry you. No, you let them go because you knew they was toxic. Don't do that to yourself. It's another one for real. Okay, Chase, I call you for real because you're the truth. Welcome back. It's just Kristen Chavis, and I'm so glad that you guys are here with me today. We're going to talk about car dreams some more and also wedding dreams. All right. Um, if you're a first time visitor, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and also that notification bell so you'll know when you'll get a new hot video about dreams, comedy skits, or whatever because it's just Kristen Chavis. All right. And if you are returning back, hey, how you doing? Okay, I'm so glad that you're here with me. All right, so let's uh, jump into prayer and then we'll get started, okay? Father, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you that your word is true. We thank you for revelation. We thank you for answered prayers, Lord. And God, we just thank you, Lord, that um, you're going to speak through this video and touch someone's heart today. Father, we bind confusion. We bind um, the spirit of lust. We bind... Uh, issues with pornography father god in the name of jesus we bind addictions in the name of jesus we bind everything that is trying to easily beset or weigh your people down in the name of jesus we bind it and cast it out in the name of jesus and what we call forth your power your peace um against every stronghold father god we call forth your freedom in the name of jesus and we call forth your deliverance and to stay delivered in jesus name god we ask that you um, speak through me, Father. Make my thoughts your thoughts, my ears your ears, my tongue your tongue, and my spirit your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whew. Thank you, Lord. All right. So, car dreams, okay? So, last week we talked about car dreams and also we dove into um, dream interpretation. And you always need to remember that when you have a dream, not to assume that it's about someone else, but make sure that you assume first that it's about you. No matter who's in the dream, um, familiar or unfamiliar, just assume that it's about you. And don't just write it off. If it's weird, don't just write it off like, oh, I must have, you know, ate something bad. No, God is really speaking to you and you need to pay attention. Also, if you have a dream, write it down. Make a voice note. Um, write it in a journal. You can text it in your phone. Just write it down because you never know what God is saying um, and how you can go back and interpret those dreams later. It's all a compass to help you, okay? So, we remember that um, you don't assume it's about you, but most of us, when you have the dream, think about what was going on with you personally before the dream, the week of the dream, the night before the dream, think about those things. Think about um, anything you've been praying about or how you've been feeling, okay? So, the next part of car dreams, remember cars represent your life or your ministry, okay? And if something's happening to your car, it's letting you know that either you're headed into destruction from whatever choice that you made or you made the choice and this is what happened, um, and is the result of the choice that you made. Okay. Um, so I had this dream. Okay. So if your car is out of control, like I've been seeing a lot of people saying, you know, I can't stop my car. It's going fast and I can't put my, you know, my foot on the brakes or the brakes doesn't work. Um, or, uh, maybe nobody's driving their car. Okay. Whoever is behind the wheel of your car, Whatever they represent lets you know what's driving you, literally. Like, what's in control of your life at the moment. If that person um, represents, like, if it's a boyfriend or something and that person is asleep at the wheel, that means that whatever situation or relationship you're with and with that person um, is a dead end, basically. It's a dead situation. Um, this person is leading leading you and they have no clue where they're going. They have no clue or don't care 
about um, what happens to you or what happens to, with their life. They're literally asleep. And you don't want anybody asleep at the wheel when you're driving or driving you, period. So if there's nobody in the seat, that means that the situation is out of control. And you may have been feeling like your life is out of control at that moment, too. Um, but if nobody's at the wheel, that's not a good sign. It means that whatever is a specific area in your life that God is trying to get your attention in, that you are just letting run loose, run rampant. Um, for me, I had a dream that my mom was driving me at first and my mom always represents like my spiritual side or I say the preacher side of me. So she was driving or wisdom. She was driving and then she got out the car and she started checking the tires. Okay. But the car is still rolling. So I'm like, mama, what are you doing? Okay. And I noticed that the when I try to get behind the, the steering wheel, the steering wheel is up high like really, really high and the seat is pulled up and my brother's, he, he's in the back seat. He's his younger self. And, um, he represents my dreams, like aspirations in life. And, uh, I couldn't get behind the wheel and the car is rolling into oncoming traffic. There's a, it's a nice little ways before you get to oncoming traffic, but it's something you need to think about. So I have to ask my brother to help me and I get the seat pull back and then I'm able to pull the steering wheel down and actually stop the car from rolling. Okay, so what was happening in my life at the time of the dream is I had just figured out um that sugar sugar could be an addiction. I was addicted to sugar. Um so I started cutting back on sugar like majorly like um, I had signs of pre-diabetes starting to form, like my neck was starting to get dark on the back and all the, you know, things of that nature, signs of, um, that you have too much sugar in your blood. So I got that under control, my husband as well, and I have this dream and the steering wheel being up high is the blood sugar. Because, I mean, when you're pre-diabetic, that means that you're going into insulin resistance and your blood sugar levels is just way too high. And it was just out of control. My life in that area was out of control and I needed to get a grip on it. I needed to get it handled. And that's what I did when I adjusted the seat. I made some personal adjustments in my life and I got it down and once i started doing that i started to see a difference in me and also start to see a difference in um my weight loss as well so when i say it could be dealing with you know whatever matter or situation that you have going on personally when there's nobody behind the wheel that's what i mean okay um not being able to stop your car or your brakes not working means also that whatever situation you're in is out of control whether it's a relationship whether it's spiritually whether it's your job whatever it is it's driving you and you don't have a grip on it it could just be worry and anxiety i keep seeing that but that's pretty much what god is trying to get your attention on and you have to pray specifically about okay lord what is this ask him to reveal it journal it pray and when you pray wait for an answer you may see words you may see a picture you may see a flash of a situation those are all answers to your prayers okay so um wedding dreams all right if you have a dream that you're in a wedding or you're getting married to somebody it doesn't mean that you're going to marry this person in real life so don't be like me, going shopping for a wedding dress because I had a dream that me and this person got married and I'm going shopping for a wedding dress. This person ain't even proposed to me. I ain't got no ring. I don't have no receipts, no nothing. And I'm shopping for wedding dresses. Why? Why did I do that? Because it seemed so real. And at the time, I was spiritually immature and I was taking those dreams literally. And I this is when I first started really dreaming 
And no one had ever taught me that, you know, dreams have a spiritual meaning and God's trying to get your attention. So when you're dreaming about weddings, this is literally God trying to get your attention and say, hey, I'm over here. Like, you need to pray. You need to spend time with me. You need to worship. You need to just get into your word or some quiet time so that I can speak to you. And I just want to spend time with you. Um, We are his bride the church and Christ is our husband or the groomsman and um, scripture talks about this he always relates us to us being his bride his church and when you see yourself in a wedding that is all he's talking about he's not literally saying hey the man that you're with right now you're gonna marry him no he uses whoever is close to you and has a significant meaning to you even if it's an ex, look, you might have a dream that you're marrying an ex. That don't mean hit them up on Facebook or hit a jump in their DMs or let them back into your life because they might marry you. No, you let them go because you knew they was toxic. Don't do that to yourself. He's trying to get a message over to you, okay? Because in Revelation, it says, come back to your first love. Christ is supposed to be our first love. Why? Because he first loved us, okay? So he will use a person that was your first love or somebody that you are madly in love with in your dream to get the message or the point across. It happens to me all the time. It still happens to me. I'm happily married. But sometimes people that I dated when I was a teenager pop up in my dream to present a message. It doesn't mean that I'm supposed to go holler at them. It means, hey... I want to show you how strongly I feel about you. And you will feel those feelings in the dream. You will feel strongly about that person, like a deep love. That is God letting you know how he feels about you. It does not mean that you need to marry that person, okay? Um, it does not mean that you need to continue to chase that person or let that person walk all over you so that y'all can get married. That's not that's not the case. He is using that person as a symbol, and that is it. I had a dream. I would always have dreams. Um, this is over 10 years ago. But I was on a good path. I was um, praying, reading my word, just really getting close to the Lord. And uh, me and this guy, we got a little bit serious, and we were friends. But we got serious and I strayed away from all of that. I did. And I started having the wedding dreams where he was like waiting at the altar. And I always was having trouble with my dress. Like either the butt part, I had a beautiful dress, but the butt was out. Or I had the dress, but I was late to the wedding. Or um, I had the dress and I couldn't find my shoes. And he's waiting at the altar. So in my mind, I was like, Snap, he, he thinking about proposing to me. I need to go get my dress. I need to make sure I have all this stuff ready. So when he's ready to get married, you know, I'll be ready. Because in my dream, I wasn't ready. So that means that he's trying to tell me, God's trying to tell me that I need to be ready for whenever he get, he's ready to marry me. Not the case. Because the guy I'm talking about right now, if you watch the video before this, he is the guy where I had the car wreck dream. And God was like, you can marry that dude if you want to. You're going to wreck your entire life. He wouldn't eat. God was trying to get my attention and say, hey, Kristen, I miss you. Come back to me. He's not the one. He's not it. He's not what you think he is. But I had feelings for him. So he was using him as a stand-in for himself, Jesus Christ. And you have to be careful because you can get confused and think that, you're supposed to be with that person. And I just, I keep seeing this, that some people have made decisions about their life based on seeing yourself marry this person in your dreams. And I've talked to many people that have had dreams like this. People, some of these people are obsessed with people they ain't never met. Thinking, oh yeah, he gonna be my husband. He gonna be, no, no. Y'all don't even talk on the phone. Y'all don't even text. How is he going to be your husband? 
or you may have a dream that it's a celebrity and you're getting married to them. That doesn't mean you're that's gonna be your husband, okay? And I'm seeing even um dreams where you're intimate with someone. And you may be intimate with someone that's not your husband or someone that you're not currently with. That does not mean that you're supposed to try to hook up with that person. God is using that person as a symbol because our relationship with him should be intimate. Our relationship with him should be on a deep level. He uses those things that are familiar to us to get the point across, okay? There is no closer relationship to have with the person than being intimate with them sexually. That is very close. That is very personal. So if you've had um, a very deep prayer session, a very deep worship session, and then after that you have a sex dream or a dream where you're intimate with someone, it does not mean that um, God is, you're, you have a lust problem or the devil's trying to tempt you or um, you should go cheat on your spouse. This is just the Lord using a person that you may not know. If you're a woman, it'll be a male. Or um, maybe it's something that um, you're trying to do. He's using that person as a symbol for you. Look, you're, you're going in the right direction. That's what it means. You're going in the right direction and you, you need to continue to go in this direction. Okay, same point. Um, I pray about what I should do on social media. I pray about what I should post, um, how I can make a difference. So when I'm consistently posting and doing a great job, most of the time I have a dream that I have a closely intimate relationship with a popular YouTuber, Instagrammer. Okay, and this guy, he's a comedian. And he posts consistently. He has a big following. He has over a million subscribers. I do not want to be with him ever, period. Like, I'm not even, I'm not attracted to him. I know he's married. So the dream is always weird. Um, and even in the dream, I'm thinking, like, but I'm married and he's married. Like, this ain't right. And he's, like, trying to be close to me and trying to do all this extra stuff. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't know. But when I wake up, I'm like, okay, what does he represent? Oh, I'm doing a good job because he wants to be close and intimate with me. Does not mean that I need to jump in his DMs and try to hook up with him. No, no, it's not literal. It's just God giving me a thumbs up saying good job, okay? Um, if you have a dream that you're intimate with a male figure and, and it's not your husband, and you're married or single or whatever, a male figure. Males represent leadership, but oftentimes, if you know who this person is, think about what they represent to you, okay? Um, once again, it doesn't mean that you should go after that person. Just think about what they represent to you. Um, if it's a female, females are um, represent the creative side. The prophetic side, the spiritual side. When I say prophetic, that means like receiving revelation from God. Um, sometimes even as a woman, you may have a dream that you were intimate with a woman. It does not mean that you have homosexual tendencies or you should cross the fence or that you're dealing with the spirit of lust or that um, you have issues, okay? It is all symbolic. And I've had these dreams and I personally don't like them, but I understand if you um I understand what they mean. Okay. And usually I have a dream like that, like where there's been a serious breakthrough, or maybe I was like in some really deep prayer warfare. I ministered to somebody, um, about something that God maybe has been trying to get through to them. And I may have a dream that I'm really close with a woman. And like I said, it's my least favorite um, dream to have. And I've even prayed like, Lord, really, like, we we, we got to show it like that. We can't we can't do it. We can't show it, show it to me another way. I get it, though. I get it. But, okay. <laughs> so, um. Uh, 
everybody may not have dreams like that, but I know for some people it may make you panic. Like, oh my gosh, like, uh uh-uh, the devil trying to get me. I need to go. I bind the spirit of lust. Like, it make you want to go in, but it's not that. If you, especially if you had a powerful spiritual moment the night before where you did ministry or whatever, you may have a dream like that. I'm going to just be real. It doesn't mean that you're off. It doesn't mean that you're under attack. It's just... You did a good time. You did a good job. You did a good job. You're really flowing. You're really flowing in your prophetic gifts. You've gotten really close and intimate. Like intimacy is just to show you how close you are or how well you were flowing in that particular area. That's it. It's not meant to be sexual at all. You will feel those feelings, but it's not meant for you to act on them. You got to be mature enough to know that I'm. that's not for me to do. Um, even for men, same thing. If you, um, especially if you're a man and you're in ministry, you're a pastor, um, you counsel or whatever, and maybe you had a strong breakthrough with somebody that you were counseling or ministering to, and you may have a dream where you were intimate with a guy or a friend or a best friend, it may make your stomach turn. Um, it doesn't mean that you have homosexual tendencies. Like I said, it is a sign to show you that you were, um, you're flowing and you're close and you're in the right vein with that gift. And I really sense that there's a lot of people that have made decisions in their flesh or decisions in their natural life or real life based on a dream they've had because they had um, sexual intercourse or whatever in their dreams and you didn't have that dream for you to act on that. Sometimes you have, um, those dreams are called cleansing dreams where you have dreams where maybe you have a crush on a person or you're really feeling a person and y'all end up in a relationship together or y'all end up being intimate. Does not mean that you should try to pursue that person. Sometimes with cleansing dreams, God's just letting you, a dream is a safe place to release all of that stuff that you got on the inside of you that's stored up and release that and let that go. Okay. Um, and I know you may still have those feelings or you remember it like, man, that was a great experience. That does not mean you need to act on it. That is just a means for you to understand, use some wisdom. Okay. That happened in the dream. I need to let that go. Okay. Can enjoy it in the dream. Move on in real life. That should be on a t-shirt. Um, so yeah, that's intimacy in dreams, that's wedding dreams, and that's car dreams. I hope this helps somebody. And if it helped you, make sure that you share this with somebody. You know, put a smile on their face, help them with the, their dreams and whatnot. And we will be back here next week. Okay, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell. This is your girl, Just Kristen Chavis. I love you guys and you be blessed.